Welcome everybody to uh, June's Freelance Legends webinar. Uh, we are live on Facebook Live as well as uh, in the Zoom room. And uh, this week uh, we've got another uh, set of um, really fascinating guests, a brilliant topic uh, that we're going to be discussing today, uh, which is how to start an e-commerce business. And I'll, I'll come to that um, in a minute and I'll introduce you to, to our guests. And of course, the usual housekeeping things uh, that we have um, as part of the Freelance Legends webinars that of course the webinar is being recorded. Uh, it will be available uh, on our YouTube and Vimeo channels to watch afterwards. We will send uh, all of those who requested it a link to the recording. Um, we are monitoring the Facebook Live feed. So if you're watching us on Facebook Live, welcome as well. Uh, and we uh, will be taking questions at the end of the webinar. So without further ado, um, today's guests are the husband and wife team, Adam and Carmel Wooding, who are the owners and founders of Empower Digital. Uh, which is uh, a consultancy that focuses on e-commerce. Um, they offer digital training, support services, consultancy to a wide range of uh, people across the country uh, who are involved in e-commerce businesses. So welcome, Adam and Carmel. Thanks, Oliver. That's lovely. Thanks for having us. No worries. Well, hopefully we're going to get into a really interesting um, conversation today around, um, you know, how, uh, how e-commerce works. Um, but um, you guys have got a, a fascinating story, uh, you know. Um, first of all, tell us where you are uh, and how you got there and, and what's happened to you over the last few months. Thank you, Oliver. Um, well, just really quickly, we'd love to love to begin by uh, acknowledging and paying our respects to the Yugambeh people who, who are the traditional custodians of the land on which we are presenting from today. And we'd like to pay our respects to their elders past, present and emerging. We'd also like to acknowledge uh, all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders here today and pay our respects to your elders past, present and emerging as well. Thank you, Adam. No, yeah. Thank you. So, um, thanks a lot. Well, let me give everyone a brief overview of who we are and where we've come from. So, Adam and I began Empower Digital last year because we're really passionate about Australian small businesses and seeing them succeed. As you mentioned, Oliver, we make work um, mainly in the e-commerce field. We use the Shopify platform, but we also um, love to help out with digital tools such as G Suite, Google My Business, um, ensuring that people have a social media presence and all of those kind of things. Um, you were asking where we were and how we got here. So I think a lot of people at this time are reflecting on, you know, where they should be if COVID hadn't happened. And so where we should be if COVID hadn't happened is we should be travelling around Australia in a caravan and working on the road and, um, and living our best life, I guess, with our three kids. Um, we, the plan for this year was to actually work remotely anyway, um, but taking workshops to small businesses in regional communities and running workshops with them in digital tools and Shopify. Um, so we started that journey. We got it down as far as Echuca on the Victoria New South Wales border, um, was camped along the Murray, it was just beautiful. And then we heard that the Queensland borders were shutting. So we had to kind of make a really quick decision, um, both you know, for our personal lives and our business lives. Um, at that time, you know, little regional community IGAs were shutting their doors to people who weren't from that community. Um, we were also considering the fact that we were in a very small caravan um, with no heating um, and that we were in Victoria and winter was coming. So we made the decision um, to run home to Queensland. We're from Warwick, which is in southeast Queensland. Um, so we, you know, drove straight for three days, just kind of put the kids on their iPads in the back and, and just drove. Um, and made it home about three hours before Queensland closed their borders. Um, so it was a little bit, it was a little bit hairy there for a moment, but um, no, we, we made the right decision and it's given us time to kind of reflect on our business um, and reflect on how we can pivot and present our offerings. So a lot of our face-to-face -face workshops, we've now con um, converted to online content. So, you know, we've been running webinars, um, We've been catching up with people one-on-one -on, -one on Zoom, providing mentorship and support. But it's really interesting. Um, a lot of the businesses that we've been working with are in the same boat. They're looking at pivoting and, 
how to make the most of the online space. So for some, um, that's, you know, taking their existing business online, their bricks and mortar stores, making sure they've got an online present and an online store. But we've also met lots of people that, you know, are, are crafters or artisans who have gone, well, hang on a minute, this hobby of mine, or, or I've had an idea for drop shipping that's been floating around my head for a long time. And they're kind of taking the horse by the reins and saying, well, you know what, now's that time. And we're really excited to, to see what these small businesses are doing and, and how we can help them with that as well. Awesome. Well, I mean, today's supposed to be a, uh, an introduction to, to e-commerce and, and we've already, uh, you know, mentioned a, a number of phrases associated with e-commerce that, that may not be familiar to everybody. So wh why don't you start by just giving us perhaps a, a high level overview uh, of, of the different types of e-commerce businesses that, that are possible these days? Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Well, of course, there's the product based um, product based businesses. So you've got your direct to consumer. So if you already have a product, um, wh whether it be one that you create, um, you know, like if you're an artist or if you've got a bricks and mortar store and you've already got suppliers, you can transfer that to an online store and so sell direct to your consumers. Um, and you know other product based models exist too. So you've got drop shipping where you have a relationship with a manufacturer um, and you don't actually ever handle the products. So you create the website and um, you have that relationship and when a customer places an order, the manufacturer ships it direct to the customer. Um, that's a really great method as well, but it does mean that you need to have a really solid relationship with your manufacturers mm -hmm. um, and have really solid products as well. Um, I think, yeah, I think as well, Oliver, and I know that you, um, you had some questions for us um, in the lead up to, the, to this webinar um, around services as well and, um, and ways that, that people who, such as freelancers, um, people who offer services, how can, they, um, how can they sell their services or um, maybe uh, look at different ways of um, converting those offerings to e-commerce. And the great news is that it definitely can be done. So if, you have, if you're offering um, services, you can actually um, sell those online. And there's, there's a few different ways of doing that. And I think with regards to, to selling services online, um, it's definitely possible. And I think that sometimes we just need to be a little bit creative and think outside of the box as to how we can sell our services online. And so, for example, if, if you have a, a business that's offering, say, web design or um, web development, you can think about how you could package your package those um, offerings. So if you thought about selling a website package where you offer creating a logo and a certain amount of pages and maybe some theme customizations and packaging that up into into a product that you offer for sale on on your website and then that has huge advantages whereby your customers can see what your prices are, um, they can see what's included in that package and they can, um, they can buy that at a time that suits them as well. And the other huge advantage of, of doing that is that usually when, when customers are, are buying a service or a product online, they're, they're usually happier to pay for that uh, up front as well, which has massive um, advantages for your cash flow as well. It takes away some of that um, th those problems where, as freelancers, we we do the work and send out the invoice, then have to wait a couple of weeks for that to get paid, and, and that can drag it on a little bit. So, um, by offering services like that online, I don't know what what it is, but it just seems like customers are happier to to pay for something up front when they're buying it online. Um, so uh, that it's a it's a really great way to go. Um, another another thing that that freelancers can do with selling services online is using because often we we have a, a time exchange as as a service. So people will book out book us um, book book a time with us and pay for for that time with us. So using a service like Calendly, for example, or there's many appointment booking services out there. But Calendly allows people to book in a time into your calendar and, and you can actually set up um, payments through that as well. So people can 
your customers can book a time and pay for that upfront. Again, allowing allowing that increase of cash flow, um, and also it makes it a lot more automated for for you as well, and takes takes away a lot of back and forth um, correspondence. So it's a it's another fantastic um, way to offer services online. And I think um, the really great thing is it offers transparency as a freelancer. You know, your prices are right there or your package is right there. It's in black and white what you offer, how much it's going to cost. And as Adam said, we're conditioned that, that when we buy something on the computer, we pay, you know, like you pay and then you get delivery. So I think it's a really great um, opportunity for many people in the service industry to actually, you know, it's a win-win for everybody. They, they're attractive to clients but then they also have the benefit of cash flow as well. Definitely. So we just got a question from Lisa in, in the chat feed there. What's the spelling of the booking service that you just mentioned? Oh, um, I can write we it can put chat. it in the comment. It's Calendly. It's absolutely fantastic. Oh, Calendly. Um, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yes, Why sorry, you? Oliver. I think it may have been when my internet was cutting out. I'm so sorry. But, no, yeah, um, if you pop it in the chat, that'd be great. Yeah. Um, so it's, it is absolutely fantastic, Calendly. Um, it's integrates with a wide range of um, calendars and um, it's very easy to use and it's very powerful as well. But I wanted to, to, to tell a quick story about um, another service um, based business, um, which was my dad's business. Um, so my dad is a cabinet maker and he was doing the usual cabinet making um, things with offering kitchens and custom cabinetry and wardrobes and shelving, all of that kind of Kind of stuff, and um, and he was he was always out quoting, um, out late in the evenings, quoting and doing lots of paperwork, uh, and um, all those usual things that that cabinet makers or um, people who offer service services usually are doing. And I, I thought. I was wondering if there was a way that we could convert that service-based business into some kind of e-commerce um, based um, business. I was thinking really hard about what, what could we do to, to allow my dad to offer his, his cabinet making services online. And what we did was we, I helped him to develop a flat pack system. So he was able to offer um, flat pack cabinetry that was, still able to be customized by the customer. Um, so the customer could still get exactly what they wanted, but it was kind of became a bit of a hybrid um, service and product that we put all those products up on, onto an e-commerce store. And um, it's been a huge success for my dad and it's really helped him to um, not be out quoting quite as much because it allows his customers to get on and see prices and place orders at any time of the, the day or night. Um, and it's hugely helped his cash flow as well. And now he can he can also offer his um, cabinets uh, Australia wide as well with um, shipping. So there's definitely um, some great um, opportunities there for service based businesses to uh, to offer their offer offer those services um, it, as products um, in the e commerce field. That's that's great, and I think that shows that you know for anybody out there that um, you know e commerce businesses don't just have to be um, you know, online digital stuff, it can very easily be, uh, you know, physical products as well. So for those that are out there, I mean, you know, the, the audience has come to understand how they can start an e-commerce business. There may be, you know, any number of ideas from physical to subscription to digital to whatever it may be in terms of the ideas that they have. And, you know, again, a, a, quick, a quick Google search on e-commerce is probably you know, causes more trouble than it, than it, than it, you know, uh, more, more questions than it gives answers to because there's so much information out there. Where do you start? Great question. So I guess initially it's really important to remember that an e-commerce business is just like any other business. You need to do your market research. You need to do your financial planning and analysis, your business planning. And it's important to also realize Oliver, it's not a magic fix. So just like any business, you're not, it's not a set and forget. You can't just go, oh, yeah, I've got an e-commerce store and walk away. Any business is hard work. But, you know, as we all know, um, you know, it's worth it. Um, it's worth it for the benefits that you get out of it. So if somebody was, um, was looking at starting an e-commerce business, 
I'd, I'd advise them to thoroughly research and plan. Think about things that you would need to do in a regular store, you know, all of those kind of things. But then also there's some extra factors that people need to consider. So if it's a product-based business, and I guess even if it's not, um, really good photography is really important for an online store. So that's of your products, but then also of your team as well. Um, let your pictures do your talking. And so having a, a professional photographer take mm -hmm. those kind of things is really important. You need to think about shipping if you've got physical products. Um, it's a little bit different, obviously, for service-based businesses. But just to keep those things in mind. Um, if anyone's looking, going, oh, yeah, that sounds really great, but I don't know where to start, I'd really encourage people to think about things they're already interested in or passions that they already have. Mm -hmm. Or as Adam suggested, the services that you currently offer, think about, think outside the box and unique ways to present those to customers um, in order to have an online store. But they, people can also check out um, Google Trends, um, what's trending on Twitter, all of those kind of things for ideas about mm -hmm. where to start. And as well, I think Oliver, um, you touched on digital downloads as well before, um, which I'd like to, love to touch on a little bit there because I think that there's huge opportunities for people who, or freelancers, um, people who do have a, um, a service-based business um, to offer some of those services as digital products. So that could be um, people who, are, who design logos uh, could, could release some of those logos as stock logos and sell those as digital products on, online or, um, or create eBooks or graphics or uh, themes, um, themes if they're a web designer or um, even stock photography, uh, online courses, so that there's huge, huge opportunities to turn some of those services into digital downloads and um, create an additional revenue stream for your business. Um, so uh, that's, that's another fantastic um, an, an way to start an e-commerce business. So by doing what you're already doing. So obviously e-commerce businesses, by their nature, they're all supported by technology, web-based technology, right? So um, I'm trying to see whether or not on the Facebook, uh, Facebook live feed or, or out in the Zoom room, guys, if you've got an example, if you've got an idea uh, of an e-commerce business, then maybe we can use that in terms of uh, exploring how to get that set up. So do let us know if you're watching on the, uh, the Zoom feed uh, or in the Zoom room, if you've got an idea and something that you are exploring at the moment, perhaps we can, we can take that idea forward for you. Um, but uh, let, let's talk about the technology involved. Now, I know that the, you, know, you guys uh, have aligned yourself with a, with a particular one and you're specialists in that, but again, uh, probably the options are endless. So you know, talk to us about the, the different sort of components of technology that you would need to, to set up an e-commerce business. Definitely. Well, um, I think a great, e uh, a great accounting platform such as Rounded um, is very um, important to um, to uh, a foundation to build upon. Um, so that's uh, an, a must. Um, but I think with regards to, to actually starting all the technologies that are available, I think we, we do very highly recommend the Shopify platform. Um, there are many other um, e-commerce platforms out there. So I think um, the absolute best thing to do is to do your research and read reviews about what uh, what platforms are out there and um sign up for those trials and and give give some different platforms tri some trials and see which one fit, feels right for you and and feels your need but i think we we very much uh, recommend shopify because um shopify is a is a, a platform as a service whereby the shopify team take care of all those things like hosting and security and um, software updates and um, server issues that's all all done for you and it allows it allows the business owner to just focus on the business side of things and and doing what they love doing so um, Shopify is fantastic uh, it's great for businesses that do have that mixture of services and products because Shopify takes care of the product side of things very very well but it also has an online store um, what's called an online store sales channel, which allows a business to also set up pages where you can showcase your services. You can embed um, things like Calendly or booking systems in there and have, have your entire business 
website in the one place with all of those different offerings um, all in, on the one platform. And the other great thing about Shopify is that it's very much set up as a multi-channel platform. So you can sync your products with things like Instagram and um, Facebook, Facebook um, Messenger, eBay, and many other, um, many other channels as well to really broaden your reach um, with your products. So, um, so that's why we, we particularly like Shopify. Um, I do have a lot of experience with open source technologies and things like that, but um, Shopify is great just because they take care of all of those, um, all those things for you that you don't need to, that you don't want to worry about. Yeah. And, and how sort of, you know, on a scale of one to being able to code, uh, you know, uh, how technologically savvy do, would you, do you need to be if you, once you've signed up for a Shopify account? That's one of the things that I really love about Shopify. Um, so Oliver, I'm actually a teacher librarian by trade. So education is my background. So I'm really passionate about lifelong learning. Um, and so many of the clients we work with go, oh yeah, I need, I want an online store. But look, I'm not a technology person. I'm not a computer person. Um, and the thing I love about Shopify is it is absolutely possible to build it yourself. Shopify has so much documentation available. They've got um, a Shopify Academy to allow you to um, to allow you to go in and watch videos, um, do online courses. So, you know, like we, there's there's partners like us that exist to help the people that need that little extra kickstart. Um, but if somebody wanted to go in and set it up themselves, it is absolutely possible. And Adam and I were just talking about yesterday, in terms of the hardware, don't we live in an amazing age where all you need is a computer and the internet, which is now available wherever you are, and you can create a successful business. Mm -hmm. That's your outlay. Um, so we really live in, a, in an exciting time um, and the possibilities are just endless. But no, I don't believe that, um, you know, you have to be a coder, absolutely mm -hmm. not. To, to create the store with Shopify, yeah. And but, but I also noticed Adam, as well that you mentioned um, you, you mentioned a couple of times a website. Um, do um, would you need a website as well as Shopify or not, or it's one in the, you can combine the okay. two? Yeah. So Shopify has a has an online store sales channel that is actually a website. So you so it allows merchants to have an online store, but it's it is it actually is a website. So you can create pages and blogs and all those things. It's a, it's a website platform that also um, acts as a as a an online store as well. It's, so sorry, can I jump in for yes, a second? So the way I like to describe it. So um, basically, if I'm a candle maker and I make my candles and they're my inventory, they're my stock. So what Shopify does is it's a commerce platform. So I load all my stock into Shopify. If I was selling, you know, like if I was just a candle maker, I might sell in different areas. So I might sell at the local markets, I might sell on Facebook and I might sell to over the fence to my next door neighbor. So what Shopify does is I have my inventory, my candles, and then it lets me build a website in Shopify. So I build that, that's called my online store channel. So through that website, I sell my candles. It also lets me create a Facebook store through there. So I sell my candles on Facebook. Candles that I sell in my online store, if I'm tracking my inventory, the number of candles I sell in my online store takes down the number of candles on Facebook. It syncs all together. Um, but it, what it basically comes out as, you come out of Shopify with your own website that you sell your product mm -hmm. through, if that makes sense. Yeah, it does. And, and I might actually, because they're quite relevant to this part of the conversation, I, I might just flick to a couple of the questions that are in the feed. And, and one from Lisa, um, who asked, like, how do customers find your business? Obviously, with, with a website, uh, you can do SEO and have blog posts and all of that, all of that sort of stuff. Uh, does, does that work the same way with Shopify in terms of people finding you? Absolutely. It works exactly the same way. It, um, I'll just yeah. jump in. Sorry, Lisa. Just, just to be clear, Shopify isn't like Etsy. It's not a marketplace. You actually come out with your own store at your own domain name. So www.lisasproducts.com. Um, that's where your online store is located. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And Shopify is very, very well optimized for search engine opt optimization. Um, so there's, there's like, we could talk for hours about SEO. So I don't want to go into too much um, detail here, but 
there, there's a there's a lot of factors that Google looks at um, with website rankings in search engines, and um, some of those are like the nowadays the speed of the website is very important, um, mobile optimization, uh, how secure it is, so um, SSL certificates and things like that, and uh, all how how well optimized the code is and um, title tags and meta descriptions, all of those things. And Shopify is very, very, um, very well optimized for search engine optimization. So as long as you're putting your title, product titles in and descriptions of the products with, with the advantages for the, the customer and um, specifications and as much information as you can on there, then Google will, will be able to see all of that information on your Shopify store and that'll give you a much better chance of, of ranking higher in, in search engines. But as well with Shopify, um, the online store is just one sales channel that's available to you. Uh, so it, for some businesses, it's probably the most important sales channel, but for others, um, other businesses just sell directly through channels like Instagram or Facebook or eBay. So the way that works is that Shopify acts as the central place for your products and inventory and pricing and um, payments and, and shipping. And all of those products and prices and all that information is synced between different sales channels for you. So when you update a price or photos or anything like that in shop in your Shopify admin area, that is all synced between your different sales channels like Instagram and Facebook. So you might just have a big following on Instagram and that's your main sales channel and that's the main way that customers find you. So you can use Shopify to as the as like the the engine behind your um your store that handles all of the payments and and um, inventory and shipping and things like that when you're selling um, your products. So um, when you have a Shopify store, um, there's lots of different ways that customers can find you. Awesome. So and did, did I did I hear correctly before that you can have a Shopify store, but that can still be um, uh, it can still essentially go to your uh, custom domain name leasesproducts.com. So there's no. Correct there's no mention of Shopify in, so no. they host, they're, they're like a domain name host as well. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So yeah, it's all completely customizable and um, your end customer doesn't even know that it's a Shopify store. It, it's, it's to your, to the end customer, it just looks like it's your, website. Yeah, 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 exactly. Great. And, and another question from Scott here, um, who I'm sure this is something that a question that you probably get all the time. Uh, do you have any views on WooCommerce in comparison to Shopify? I do. Um, and I don't want to, I really need to be, I'm very conscious of not um, meaning to sound critical of WooCommerce at all. Um, my, so I, I've had, I've been in the e-commerce um, industry for about 17 years now, long before Shopify was actually around. So back when I first started out, if, if, if we wanted to have an online store, we needed to use um, platforms like WooCommerce or um, Virtuemart, with, which was um, with Joomla and um, many other open source um, platforms like that. And they are absolutely fantastic. And, um, and I love open source and still use a lots of open source technology today. Um, so WooCom WooCommerce is, is great. Um, for me though, I prefer using a platform like Shopify just because of those reasons I talked about before. With Shopify, the Shopify team take care of, of the servers and the hosting and the security side of things and software updates. And so as a merchant, you never have to worry about any of that side of, that side of the things that are going on behind the scenes. Whereas with a platform like WooCommerce, as the merchant, you're, you're kind of responsible for setting up, and I know that there are um, hosting companies that do take care of some of this for you, but um, at the end of the day, as the merchant, you're responsible for keeping, keeping WordPress up to date, keeping WooCommerce up to date, keeping any plugins that you have up to date. Um, there, there's always a possibility of your, of your site getting uh, hacked into and horrible things like that happening. And, um, you're also responsible for the, keeping the store optimized and um, 
all those kind of things that that are a, a nightmare to deal with. So um, I I think WooCommerce is great, but I do prefer the Shopify approach um, of paying that monthly twenty nine dollars US a month and having all of that taken care of and um, Shopify also has those various sales channels. They have their own payment platform and many, many other things that, that I could talk about um, as to why Shopify is, is great. So, and, and that's an interesting point that you made that we haven't raised yet, um, is how does, what's the pricing structure? Is it, is it flat fee or do they take a commission on your sales or both or, or how does it work? Yeah. It's, it's both all of us. So Shopify has a range of plans available. Um, if, you, if a merchant only needs to sell through social media sales channels, there is a, um, a light plan that started, I think, $9 US a month. And then the next plan up, which includes the online store that we talked about before, um, that starts at $29 US a month, which at the moment, I think is around 40 to 45 Australian dollars. Then um, there is plans on top of that that include additional features. But this, the, the basic Shopify plan we've found to it actually covers most people's needs and, and includes um, everything that you need to, to get started, but also support that growth as well. And so on top of that, um, as you mentioned, Oliver, there is transaction fees when somebody places an order. So the, the total of the order, I think it is about 1.75% of the total of the order plus 30 cents is what Shopify um, charges when an order is placed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And I mean, I guess, you know, whether, whether or not that's worth it um, will depend on, on your business as, you know, I guess there's going to be no sort of one size fits all approach uh, to that, but it sounds like it's, it's fairly flexible. Um, mm -hmm. Going back to the, um, uh, the feed, uh, another question from Scott, uh, we were asking about what type of businesses and maybe you could, uh, perhaps give us a few, you know, perhaps a, a quick step-by-step -step approach for Scott. Um, uh, he says, I'm exploring e-courses at the moment. And I'm assuming, again, we're talking about some kind of knowledge base um, approach to, to selling his own IP of some sort. Um, mm -hmm. Any help would be appreciated. Thank you. Um, you know, how, how would you, how would you uh, guide Scott in terms mm -hmm. of these are the, this is what I'd, uh, you know, expect you to do? Yeah, so there, there, there are a lot of options available. Um, again, if we talked about the Shopify approach, um, Shopify has a, a, like an app. So it's, it's kind of like an extension um, that allows for digital downloads. So those could be set up in Shopify and uh, those, those um, e-courses could be set up as products in Shopify that are digital downloads. So when a customer um, buys one of the courses, then they get access to the, the content after they've made that purchase. There is, so that's a great way to, a great place to start. Um, depending on the functionality that Scott wants or requires, there are other platforms available like uh, Thinkific and I think T Teachable is another one. Yeah. So there's platforms available that, um, that are separate to Shopify altogether that specialize in courses and selling courses. So um, it just depends on what functionality that Scott requires, but uh, there, there's a range of options available there. So whether it's um, digital downloads through Shopify or going to a, an actual dedicated course platform that just offers extra things like um, when students log in, they can track their progress and uh, th there's just extra features and functionality on a dedicated course platform. Um, but then there are additional costs as well. So it just depends on exactly what, um, what functionality uh, Scott, Scott requires. And I think um, as well, because we talked a little bit about digital downloads and so Shopify does, does support digital downloads uh, as well. So it is another great um, platform to, to use for that. But I, I think we, we didn't, we touched on, um, Shopify for products and I think as well for service-based businesses the way that that would work in Shopify is setting up those those products um, sorry setting up those services as products um, so thinking about if if a business offers web design um, packaging that up as a product in Shopify and making that something that customers can actually um, 
add to their cart and buy and and then the business can follow up and, and get extra information after that. Cool. So we've got a, a, a couple more questions and, and thanks for that, Scott. I hope you found that, uh, that useful. Um, and, and I guess a follow on question, and this is from Lisa, is you know, if you're to use Shopify for that kind of digital course type of, of business, do they help you with the design of those courses in terms of getting the content down, creating PDFs or whatever, whatever kind of digital content that you're selling? Do you get that kind of help as well? Or do you need sort of, you know, more something more specialist to help you with that um so shopify shopify has a great resource called shopifycompass.com and we can we can um link all of these things that we've talked about um as well um but on shopify compass there's a huge range of courses and uh, resources on there and i believe that there is one that is all based around digital downloads um which is fantastic but I think that um, in terms of actual advice and guidance through creating courses, I think that Shopify wouldn't be the best option for that. I think a, a platform like Thinkific or Teachable is more geared towards um, helping with advice around designing courses and creating PDF downloads. Uh, yeah, so sorry. I was just gonna say for anyone that is looking into that space at the moment, um, I'm aware that Thinkific, which is a separate platform, actually has something called the Entrepreneur's Growth Fund mm -hmm. at the moment, where they're actually helping people get started on their platform. Yep. So if you're looking at um, at an e-course or creating an e-course, definitely pop over mm -hmm. to Thinkific and check that out and maybe see if you can benefit from the program that they've got going yeah. at the moment. I think it includes mentoring and guidance and um, all kinds of fantastic- Other things you need, yeah. Yeah, so that's a really good one. Awesome. Again, Lisa, I'd just like to know how do you spell that? If you could pop yeah, that sure. in the chat, that's great. Sorry. So, so I do have one more question from uh, from Bronwyn as well, who's been uh, who's been hanging on. Um, and and then, guys, perhaps uh, we're so we've got about sort of seven eight minutes left. We'll do this, and then and maybe do you guys want to perhaps just give a quick demo of, of, of Shopify just to show so just to yeah. give people a visual understanding mm -hmm. and, and at that point if there are no further questions we can uh, we can wrap things up so Bronwyn she's got a great question she's actually a, um, quite a regular uh, attendee of these and loves to ask questions so thanks for that she says I'm an author a cello teacher and artist and would like to somehow combine digital downloads shipping of my product booking my lessons I would like to work within WordPress and what do the panelists think about how I might be able to combine these different income streams? Mm -hmm. Lady of many talents, probably. Yes, that's absolutely. Also. Um, so I think regardless of what platform, whether that's WordPress or Shopify, I think my approach would be the same um, regardless. Uh, so I think that there's several um, aspects to this question. So first of all, digital downloads. Um, so WooCommerce or Shopify, uh, whichever platform can support that that those kind of products um so um setting those products up as digital downloads um for a start um sh uh, booking of lessons um i think we talked a little bit be before about um platforms like calendly which allow for bookings um which are fantastic because they integrate directly with your calendar and everyone both the the person booking the lesson and the person who is the teacher um get get those times um, synced directly to your calendars. And then when, when those bookings are made, uh, it, it makes that spot unavailable for anyone else to book. So um, that works really well. And, and as we said before, you can set up um, payments so that your students can pay directly as they're booking, which really helps with cash flow. Um, and Calendly can be embedded into your WordPress site or your Shopify site. So it keeps that branding um, that it keeps the, the experience seamless for your customer as they're going through the um, through your different services. So it, it all looks like it's all in, in the one platform. So I was just going to say, Bronwyn, also what I would be thinking about is whether or not you're presenting those as three different businesses or whether it's all the same. So in Shopify, um, I know for sure you could have a different page um, for each of those different sections of your life, but manage all the products together. So you can see all the income streams in the one place. Um, mm -hmm. However, you can have, you know, Bronwyn, the author page with all your books and stuff, and people can only see the, the author products on that page. And then Bronwyn, the teacher page, and then Bronwyn, the um, 
the artist page. Mm -hmm. um, and so have those three, you know, present outwardly to your user separately, but manage the back end in the one place. Um, or if you're happy to be um, to be Bronwyn the everything on the one page and manage that outwardly to the customer in one place as well. And regards to, sorry, with regards to the um, your artwork that uh, you're also wanting to sell, I think that just ensuring that, uh, I'm, I'm imagining that you've already got your packaging for your artwork all, all sorted out, but um, services like Australia Post or Sendal um, are, are fantastic for um, delivering your artwork and they have integrations with WordPress and, um, and Shopify as well. Um, so that makes that, um, that experience uh, for the customer um, really seamless because if, as, long as, you're in, as long as you have your weights entered into WordPress or Shopify, um, then Australia Post or Sendal or whichever um, shipping app that you're using will be able to present calculated rates to your customers depending on their um, address. So they're getting the, the correct rates and you're getting the correct amounts so you're, you're not losing out on shipping either, which is really important. And, and Bronwyn says, no, I don't have anything sorted yet. It's all dreams. Oh, with, sorry. Uh, you know, hopefully, hopefully those dreams are a little bit closer after, uh, after the webinar today. Um, we've got another question from Lisa, something which we touched on before. Um, uh, but can you link Shopify to your existing web page? And I guess the other question to add to that is, should you link Shopify to your existing web page? Yeah, so um, to, um, to answer that question, the first part, um, yes, you definitely can link Shopify to your ex existing web page. So you could set up the light plan that we talked about before, which is the um, $9 a month, um, sorry, $9 US dollars a month, which mm -hmm. is about 14 or 15 Australian um, per month, uh, just to get access to using Shopify to manage your product. So it doesn't give you the online store functionality, but what it does give you is what's called the Shopify buy button, which is a, another sales channel that, um, which is, works the same way as Instagram or, um, Instagram or Facebook, there's other sales channels that we talked about, but the buy button allows you to embed your uh, single products or collections of products onto another website that you already have. And, um, customers can uh, browse those products, add them to a cart. So a, 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 when a customer adds the product to their cart, a, a little cart pop up pop, um, comes up and um, customers can then click checkout, which then takes the customer to the Shopify checkout area um, and the customer would check out on your Shopify checkout page. So um, yeah, it, you can definitely do that. Um, I think whether you should or not, um, it really depends on your current situation. Um, I think in my opinion and in my experience that uh, having your store, having your products and all of your website on the Shopify platform is, a, is the best experience for the customer, if you're your customer, um, because it's just, it just works, it's more seamless for the customer um, to have everything on the Shopify um, platform but if you already have a really well established um, website and uh, it's already ranking really well in Google and all of your content and you've got lots of blogs blog posts and all that sort of stuff and it's just not feasible to switch everything over to Shopify then the buy button. I think because of the distortion we may have to leave that for another time so maybe pop yourself on mute and and uh, we'll bring this to, to a close um, which is a bit of a shame but the, the, look, the best thing is for those of you watching is of course that um, Adam and Carmel uh, of course, we'd be delighted to talk to you uh, about helping you uh, realize your e-commerce dreams. Um, we'll make sure that there's a, a link to their website or contact details in the follow-up email that we send um, with the recording. Um, and of course, mention that you attended the webinar. I'm sure that they'll, uh, I'm sure that they'll take great care of you. Um, next uh, Freelance Legends webinar is going to be an absolute cracker. Um, in uh, probably middle of July, just after the end of financial year, we've got a panel of three freelancers who are within the first 18 months of their freelance journey. So we're gonna be exploring uh, who they are, how they became a freelancer, and what they've learned in the first 12 months. The good, the bad, and the ugly. 
uh, around the first 12 months of being a freelancer. So it's going to be really, really exciting. On behalf of everybody uh, who's attended today on Facebook Live and, of course, uh, in the Zoom room, uh, Adam and Carmel, thank you so much for taking the time to share your expertise. I know that from the questions and everything else that I've seen that they found it, um, you know, it's really been engaging content um, and, uh, you know, fascinating to begin to understand just what can be accomplished with, uh, with e-commerce.